How many of you are glad that He's the reason that we live? Amen. Without the Lord, where would we be tonight? But I'm glad to have the Lord on my side. So thankful for the promises of the Lord tonight. And uh, we're going to try to dive into God's Word. I feel like that there will be at least somebody, if not everybody, that the Lord will speak to and will help tonight. And uh, there are some of you that said, you know, I really could use a word from God. And I pray that this evening will be the time that the Lord will give you the word that you need and in the season that you need it in. If you have your Bible tonight, we're going to be turning, and I don't want you to stand just yet, but we're going to be turning into the book of Matthew, chapter number 15, and we're going to start at verse 21. I just want you to uh, get your finger there if you've got a tablet or an iPhone or whatever, smartphone or something like that. Uh, just get the place getting ready to read. Matthew, chapter 15, and we're going to start at verse number 21. How many of you can say tonight, Lord, speak to me? Will you say that tonight? Lord, speak to me. And will you say this with me tonight? Lord, speak to my neighbor tonight. Amen. You know, a lot of times we can come off as being very selfish, can't we? And, um, and I don't think it's a selfish thing to want the Lord to bless you, but sometimes we forget about those people around us and the other people, what they're going through. We should always have compassion one toward another, praying for each other. And that's what we try to do here at Grace Street. If you haven't already took the time to partake or participate in the service we have on Saturday night at 530, I highly encourage you to do that. Even if you cannot be here, which we hope that you can, uh, at least try to join us at home by praying around 530 at night. We take and go through a list of needs of people who are really in need and people that say, hey, I, would you pray for me? And we take those needs serious. We go to that prayer room. That's what it was designed to do, was get in there and pray. And I believe God's honoring it. We have had some great services. The last two Sunday services have been wonderful. And I think a lot of that is a product of the fact that we have gathered together, taken the time to go before the Lord and pray. But I want to give you a little bit of what I'm going to call a pretext explanation tonight. And uh, before we read this text, you kind of somewhat understand as we get ready to read it. But in chapter number 15 and about verse 21 beginning, uh, the, this is a text or a place in the Word of God that recants an account of what, we will know, well, what is known as or what we will know as the Gentile woman or a Gentile woman. There's a lot of relevance and a reason why that it's important to understand it was a Gentile woman as you read the story. But this woman in the story has come to Jesus and she begins to plead with them to have mercy, and either she is seeking to be relieved of the demonic attacks of her daughter, or either she is seeking that the Lord will heal and deliver her demon-possessed daughter. When I read it, I read it over and over, and I could not clarify or get a clear, clear understanding 100% myself as to maybe which direction, that because I, I'm not that lady and I wasn't there, but I can only assume that it was probably one of the two things that she was seeking after. And the Bible would show us that she's, she is seeking something as she is saying, have mercy on me. I began to think to myself, maybe this woman uh, was dealing with so much with having to live with a demon-possessed daughter that it was, it was just uh, perplexing her, for lack of a better way of putting it, and her life was miserable, and she said, Lord, have mercy. Maybe that was it. Or maybe, like I said, she was just so tired of seeing her daughter go through what she was going through. She did the same thing that some of us parents do when we see our, parents, our kids going through a rough time, and we say, Lord, please have mercy on my grandson or my daughter or my whoever, because we love them. But many people have read this particular story and when they get done reading it, they come away with a certain feeling of confusion because of the way that Jesus responds to this woman. You will not find very many places in the Bible. I know there's at least three, but you won't find too many places in the Bible where that Jesus responds quite the way He does to this woman. As I began to think about it, I thought to myself how unique that is because if you really get that right down to it, it almost feels like a reverse of the way we see things in the Bible. You see, in the Bible, in the majority of the New Testament here, you see, or much of the New Testament, you see where Jesus is with the disciples, and He's around people. 
So in physical bodily form, you see him speaking a lot. So when people ask him questions, you'll see him respond to those questions. But in this story, you're going to see something a little different. And you're going to be able to identify. Somebody here tonight say, Lord, I'd like to be able to identify with what's going on here in the story. I believe the Lord's going to help us tonight. But I want us to slow down long enough to read the text and consider the way that Jesus responds to this woman who's crying out for mercy. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21 beginning. The Bible says here, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a woman, <coughs> excuse me, of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him. Did you hear that? She came out of these coasts and began to cry unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She even went as far as to recognize who he was. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But the Bible said in verse number 23, and I want to slow down long enough that how many's got it? How many's looking at it right now? I want you to look at the, the way the Lord responds to this woman, and beginning in verse number 23. Those of you that are at home riding down the road in your car and you don't have your Bible, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask you to trust me. This is what it says. But he answered her not a word. Did you hear that? This woman came crying and asking for mercy. She says, I've got a daughter at home that's vexed with the devil. I need something. I got a situation. Anybody here got any situations? I got a situation, Lord. I need help. Verse 23 said, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. Will you raise your hand with me for just a moment? We've prayed tonight, but I want to pray that the Lord will just grace the words that I'm about to speak to touch somebody's life. Father, we come before the throne of grace tonight knowing, God, of our great need for a God that rules and reigns over everything. We're praying and believing by faith tonight, God, that you're going to use this message to infiltrate someone's life at a season when they're struggling or a place of their life where they have lack of understanding and they need a fresh word from God. And I pray use this to help someone to travel another mile down this journey as we live day to day in the Lord. And everyone can say in Jesus' name, amen. If I could but maybe shine a little light on what I was explaining to you earlier that a lot of people read this and they kind of come away, they don't really understand it. The reason that a lot of times people read this and they don't really understand this is because they think to themselves, every time that a person speaks, they cry out, they beg for mercy, or they say anything, the natural understanding, because we know we've got a good and a loving God, don't we? We know He's a great and a merciful and a loving God. So we just naturally think, that when we read this story, something doesn't add up. Something seems a little off here. Why why would Jesus, I mean, this woman seems to be, I mean, we weren't there, but it sounds almost as if this woman is sincere in her intention. She's, She's vexed with a, she's got a daughter that's vexed with the devil, and she's having to deal with this demon possession probably on a daily basis. Her heart's broke to see her daughter like this. There's a lot going on at home, and she comes begging for mercy, and he don't even answer her. He doesn't look at her and say, give me a minute. He doesn't say, go away. He doesn't say, leave me alone. He doesn't say anything. doesn't give her an answer. Just leaves her standing there looking at him. Now, you can understand why somebody that may be a new Christian or somebody that maybe reads this is getting ready to go to bed at night and they just kind of shake their heads. And, wow, I don't understand that. Is anyone just honest enough that you're not trying to be high and holy? You ever read things and you think to yourself, I don't really understand that. Now, anybody else besides me? I mean, I've been preaching this gospel a long time. But, but I read this and I understand a lot of people have read this and not fully understood it, but I want to shed just a little light, maybe give you a slight example so you can kind of understand maybe the reason why the Lord responded the way or didn't respond the way that He did. Has anyone ever had somebody that maybe you have done a lot for? 
You've done a lot of stuff for them. If they needed something, you run to their call. You try to help them when they're down and out. If they need to move, you help them move. Or if they need to borrow something, you loan it to them. You try to go out of your way to be there when they need you. Anybody beside me? And yet, you know, they act like they don't really appreciate it. And the only time they seem to want anything to do with you is whenever you got your hand out or you got a, you made a big deposit last week and they need something. Yeah, you know anybody like that? The only time they want anything from you is whenever they are in need of something. Other than that, they could care less. They wouldn't spit on you if you were on fire. Know anybody like that? And, and the thing is tonight, I'm not saying that necessarily that this woman is exactly like that. But you might understand the rare way that Jesus reacts to this Gentile woman's cries by not saying a word. You see, the Gentile people as a nation had rejected God. They had rejected His, 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 his sovereignty, his, his deity. They had rejected Him as Lord and Savior. They had rejected and turned their back on God. You remember the Tower of Babel and, and some call Babel? You remember how that many of them had reacted towards God God, and you see the judgments of God towards these people. And so it's almost as if you don't want me whenever I want to, you know, you don't want me any other time until something happens in your life. And the Lord, I believe that God is merciful, and I believe that God, He is loving and gracious, but God does not want to be our genie in a lamp bottle. He doesn't just want to be there when you get thrown in jail. He don't want to just be there as a quick fix whenever you took a little too much drugs and over to, oh Lord, help me now. And uh, not saying that God won't or God can't help us in the time of need, but God does not desire to be a girlfriend or a one-night stand kind of God. He wants to be an everyday, 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week kind of God, not a God that you just serve on Sunday when it feels convenient, or not a God that whenever you feel like it in your flesh and everything's going good and you got your stimulus check and unemployment finally started rolling in, so now you feel like serving God. We're talking about a God that wants a people to love Him and serve Him when there ain't much in the cupboard, whenever you don't know how you're going to make that bill paid and when the kids act like they don't want to serve the Lord and when your grandchildren you ain't seen them in forever and, and things ain't going good and the stock market's down and the gas prices are up God wants you to serve the Lord in the worst of times and in the best of times. He don't want you to just come along one day well I got some problems going on and then turn around and walk away. Now I don't know the whole situation in this woman's life but because I was not her, I didn't live with her, I didn't know her, but I can tell you this tonight. She was a Gentile woman, and we could also go as far as to say that if anybody knew that woman's heart, who would have known that woman's heart? He would have known what her truest and purest intentions are. We already know by reading the Word of God that the scribes and the Pharisees had a high reputation of coming along at times of, uh, uh, throughout the Bible where that they would challenge the Lord and, and their motive was not pure and we saw that through the text so we don't know maybe this woman's motive wasn't really pure maybe there was something else going on I don't know but I know this one thing that I've got to bring out to you and to me that the Lord dealt with me this week is the fact that this Gentile woman came for an answer but Jesus did not give her an answer have any of you ever needed an answer from the Lord or you felt like, I need you to show me what is going on. I need you to show me what the next step is in my life. I feel empty right now. I don't know. I feel like I've been in the wilderness like the children of Israel for 40 years and I need you to say something. I need you to tell me something, anything. I mean, just tell me, hold on or tell me to wait a minute or tell me to, to, to stay put or tell me to move on or tell me something, I just don't have an answer and I need an answer. Am I talking to anybody at all? You see, the thing is that if you serve the Lord very long, you're probably going to run into that place where you're going to be like this woman and you need an answer, but yet no answer is there. You may wait weeks, you may wait months, and you say, God, I don't understand. Did your word not say if you ask anything in the name of Jesus, 
Jesus that he would do it? Did he not say in the Word of God, you have not because you ask not? I mean, I'm not understanding this. Well, you are a lot like this woman in this text because you have a need in your life. You need God to show you something, but yet you've not received it or you've not yet to see it. Can someone say, help me tonight? You see, this week the Lord began to deal with this pastor's heart in, in many different ways and in frustrating ways to help me to get a lesson. I think back to the major and minor prophets and how that God would move sometimes and give them a message in the Old Testament and, and He would sometimes give them a verbal message and other times they, He will allow them to go through something. It might be Hosea and Gomer and just to be able to share a message that is going to be foretelling of what the Lord would do with the church of today when he takes that harlot who's run out on him and he brings her back, gets her off the auction block of slavery and he brings back a woman that left him and walked out on him. You see, God sometimes does that. And this week, the Lord, boy, he really got my attention because there's one thing that I do not like. I don't like it when someone acts like you're not good enough for them to answer you. Come Come on now. It's a frustrating thing uh, when people act like that you're, you, you're not worth anything. You're, you're sorry, no good for them. At least that's the way it makes you feel when they avoid you or ignore you. Am I talking to anybody tonight? But this past week, I had several situations. Some of them were people that I'm doing jobs for and I need them to give me an answer about something so that I know what I'm going to do and they're not answering me and it's beginning to frustrate me. And uh, the more that that rocks on, then, then I got another situation. I don't have time to go into great detail, but the place where I live at, the landlord decided to wait till the last minute and uh, decided his sure insurance or whatever, he needed to get something, and, and all of a sudden, uh, his emergency became my emergency, and I had to take off two days of work, and he sent an electrician over because they needed to change out the electrical panel so that they could get some sort of better insurance, I guess. I don't know because the old the old panel was out of date and wasn't up to code. So this man comes over, this electrician, and he hooks something up and whatever and, re, and redoes the panel. And when it's all said and done, I don't realize it, but my dryer's not working. I think maybe it's a heating element. I buy another uh, kit where you got all the pieces to replace. Sunday afternoon after I got out of church, I went out there. Our laundry's piling up. I've got to get clothes washed. We got three people in the house that got to work and all this and the, all of our clothes are dirty because I've been waiting and I've already, uh, you know, I thought well, it was just something to do with the dryer. So I began to put these parts on the dryer and lo and behold, it don't fix it. I've done replace every piece that would normally go out that would cause that problem. It didn't fix it. Well, I've had that issue once before and so I thought the only other thing I can think of is that maybe that the outlet's only putting out 120 or 110 instead of the 220 or 240 that it's supposed to be putting out. It's only working on one leg's hot, if you will. And so I began to test it, and lo and behold, something's wrong. So I began to immediately think, well, maybe that electrician didn't hook something up right. I don't know. So I, I sent a message to my landlord and let him know, I really need you because now I've already lost a few days waiting on the package to arrive from Amazon. I'm really needing an answer so we can get our clothes wash. I sent a very nice text message. I said, you know, I took my dryer apart. I sent him a picture so he understood that I'm really in the middle of something here and I need an answer. Very nice. And I get thanks. THX. That's what I got. THX. I told Brother Eric, I said, I didn't tell the man he was handsome. I don't know what thanks mean. I told him I need help, and I need to get the electrician over here and to get my dryer fixed so we can do our clothes. You know, I don't know any other way to say it, THX. I mean, like I said, I, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't tell him he looked like Clint Eastwood or something. I just, you know, I need an answer. And so then I sent him another message, and I think, well, Maybe he, didn't, maybe he didn't see the picture. Maybe he misread it or something. So I sent him another message. I said, so if the electrician happens to come tonight, because I knew he lived right down the road, I said, we'll be home all night. No answer. So I thought, well, I don't want to annoy the man. I don't want to pester him. So I let a day go by. No answer. 
Another day goes by, no answer, no reply. I thought, well, maybe something's gone wrong. I send him another message. Let him know, we really need to use our dryer. Is there anything you can do, any updates, anything? No answer. Anybody ever been there before? By now I'm starting to, a sanctified preacher starting to have his sanctification tested real good. Starting to get real agitated. I ended up, long story short, I had to crawl up in the attic space and run a whole new wire to keep it simple. Brother Eric came over and helped us get it hooked up. So I now have a dryer. Now, two days or whatever, I, whatever was that yesterday? Well, guess what? All of those days, I got no answer. Finally, he decides to message me. He says, did you get the dryer fixed? Boy, I thought of a thousand things I could probably say. I could let right into him and tell him how frustrating it was to get in a hot attic and crawl around covered in insulation. Oh, but I thought, Lord, I need a place to live. And so I just said, yes. And I left it at that. I started to write THX. Praise God. But I'm telling you, the hallelujah. Somebody say, help our pastor tonight. But you see, what I'm trying to show you tonight is that the Lord used this thing to really get my attention. And the Lord began to speak to me about the places of our life where that we really need God to answer us. We need an answer about something that's going on, and we're just not getting the answer. And I realized tonight, now I want to talk to some real super holy folk, some real super super spiritual folk because maybe they're online. I don't think they're here tonight. I don't know. But if you are, I'm talking to you for a minute because I know that there are some people that it's almost like they're having a 24-hour a day, seven, 24-hour a week, seven, day, seven days a week conversation with God. Every time he talks, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that, the Lord said this, the Lord said that. And I don't know, folk, that ain't the way it works for me. Anybody else? Uh, I don't know, I just don't, and I'm here I am preaching it. And I don't mean no harm, maybe somebody's got something that I ain't got, but but when people go to telling me all that God said that, God said that, God said the other, especially if they're living like the devil. And I'm thinking to myself, I back up just a little bit, because I don't know anybody really in reality that has been exactly like that. As a matter of fact, anybody besides me have whole seasons sometimes where you get out and pray and you don't hear a thing from God. Anybody else understand what I'm saying? Those times that you, Sister Rachel, you're talking to the Lord, you're saying, God, I, re don't, I, I just want to remind you, Lord, that, 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 that my, my rent's two months behind now. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to do and uh, just I, I just felt like reminding you, Lord, like I was with the landlord. I just Any updates? Anybody ever felt like going in prayer and saying, God, any updates? Because I really need some direction. Anyone feel what I'm saying tonight? But these are the kind of people that I want to talk to. People that are much like maybe the evangelist. You may be watching tonight. You've been evangelizing, preaching the Word of God, and you went through coronavirus and the shutdown. Many of your meetings have closed down, and all of a sudden now you don't know what you're going to do. The bills are piling up, and you don't know whether to go out and get a regular job or just wait a little while. Let me tell you, I've been in that place before in the in-between. Somebody say in-between. And there's some folk tonight that are in the in-between and you don't know what to do. You're looking around, you don't